Now let's talk about some of the key features in the UKB wrap. The first is this cohort browser, which allows us to explore and extract data contained within the .dataset file, such as phenotype data. To access the cohort browser, you'll need to click on the .dataset file that's located within the root directory of your project. This will then open up the cohort browser. This cohort browser allows you to explore the data and build cohorts of patients by filtering based off of specific fields of interest. This cohort browser has multiple components. First, you can create cohorts by adding filters to the data to select participants based off of fields of interest. So you can start with your 500,000 participants and select those participants based off of certain fields of interest. And then below here, we have a dashboard where we can add tiles to visualize and explore our data where these tiles will allow us to look at the distribution of fields of interest. Alternatively, we can view a tabular form of our data by clicking on the data preview tab that's here. Here is a screenshot of what you'd see on the data previews tab, where here we have a table with participants on the rows where the participant IDs have been blocked out for security reasons. And then on the columns, we have different selected fields of interest. There is also a genomics tab here where we can examine variants at specific chromosome locations. So we can search by different gene coordinates, and then this will return an interactive plot for allele frequencies at different transcripts. Now let's go ahead and explore some of the data by adding a few tiles. Here we have a field explorer window that contains the phenotypes that are within the scope of your UKB project. If you notice, the fields are organized in the same hierarchy as what is seen in the UKB showcase, where here we can either use the search bar or we can manually click through the trees to select fields of interest. So say we are interested in sex, so we can add this as a tile and also age at recruitment. Going back to our dashboard here, looking at our tiles, we can see the breakdown of the number of male, females and males in our data set, as well as the distribution of ages. From here, we can start filtering to generate a cohort, where say we want to group participants that are older than 65 years old. The first thing that you'll notice is that the cohort count has now changed from 500,000 to about 73,000. And additionally, the data in our tiles have been updated to reflect the data in our cohort, where now we have about 30,000 males and females. We can go ahead and name this cohort and then click Save. So now this cohort will appear as an object on our project that we can return to later. We can also create a complementary cohort by selecting, by selecting the plus sign here and selecting all those participants who are not in our over 65 cohort. So all those remaining participants. We can then name this cohort under 65 and save this cohort as well to our project. And now if we look at our dashboard again, we can now see that the data in our tiles have been updated, where now they are grouped and color-coded by our two cohorts. So we see that we have 
the distribution of sex in our over 65 cohort in blue and then under 65 in purple. And similarly for the ages as well.